Recording gameplay is easy with OBS, but if you're new, you may not know how to actually add audio to the recording. Or maybe you aren't sure what the right settings are for your equipment. But I'm going to show you all that fun stuff today. Hello my YouTube friends! OBS has a lot of settings that can make it confusing, for someone new to figure out how to set up and properly record your screen. So let me show you the things that you need to know so you can record your gameplay really easy. So you know what? Let's get to it! When you first start OBS, it might open to this auto configuration wizard. You can go ahead and just click cancel on that. We're gonna set up everything on our own. You may also have some stuff down here in your audio mixer. And let's take care of that first. We're gonna go to settings. And then we're going to go to our audio and just make sure that your global audio devices are all disabled. Some people will tell you to set this up. I would rather add the stuff individually on my own so it is not confusing and I know exactly what is in each of my scenes. So once all your global audio devices are disabled, what we're going to do is go to video here and we just want to set this up to the actual resolution that we want to record at and you want to set up your output scaled resolution to the same as your base canvas resolution. And then you want to set your frames per second. Now, if you're doing video games, you're probably going to set it to 60 frames per second. It's going to look a lot smoother if you do. The next thing we're going to want to do is go into our output. Now, when you first show up, yours is probably going to look like this. And we're going to go up into output mode and we're just going to change it over to advanced. Very simple. And then we're going to go to recording since that's what we're trying to do. And you don't need to change any of this. This is the standard recording, the way it's set up. So you can set your recording path however you want. You can send your videos to whatever location you would like. You can leave your recording format at MKV. I will tell you why later. We're going to drop this down and select our stream encoder. Chances are you will either have uh, X264 or NVIC. You can choose either one of those. NVIC is generally speaking what you're going to choose if you have an NVIDIA graphics card and there is really good reason to do so. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, the actual encoding is built in on a little chip, which means that you can do your video games and everything else and encoding for your recording is not going to affect anything else on the machine. However, if you are doing your recording in X264, that uses the CPU, which means that the same CPU that's going to basically run the game and all the other background functions of your computer also has to do the encoding. Now, some people think that it actually looks better, but you also need basically a supercomputer to make it look that good. Whereas if you're using NVIC, maybe the quality is slightly lesser, but it doesn't affect anything on your computer to use it. And that is why using the NVIC encoder is definitely the right choice. So we'll set it up with our NVIC encoder first. You don't want to rescale the output. You don't need to do any of these other things. You're going to come down here to rate control and you're going to select CQP and your CQ level can be 20, that's just fine. You wanna go ahead and set your preset to the best quality that you can possibly do it. I would start at the default at first just to make sure everything works. High quality, two passes, perfectly fine, profile high. All of this stuff can stay exactly the same. You wanna uncheck look ahead and you wanna check psycho visual tuning and the max B frames and everything here is set up for us to make a great recording. Now, if you were going with the X264, we're gonna come down here and CBR is a constant bit rate. You can select some other ones. CRF is probably what you're going to choose. Generally speaking, CRF 20 is about the right number. You don't need to change anything in your keyframe interval. We're going to go down here to profile and we're going to set it to high. You don't need to do anything with tune. The CPU usage preset is where most of the magic happens. And you're going to have to test around with this on your computer. So the first thing you should do is start up your game and have it running in the background. Then what you're going to want to do is go down here, right click and go to task manager. And you just want to click on performance and go to CPU. Now you want to take a look at your CPU settings and where they are and then go ahead and record 
just a little bit and see where your CPU stuff ends up when you're doing X264. If your CPU is pegged at 90% while you're trying to record it, well, you're pretty much maxed out and you know that these are maybe the best settings that you can get. In fact, you might have to dial it down a little bit. However, if you're at 20%, or something like that in your CPU, and you can certainly come in here and you can just start going down the list until you get to one that, you know, starts to tax your machine. So the lower you go on this list, the higher the quality. And I honestly don't think it's really even necessary to go much past fast. If you manage to get to fast and your machine is still not pushing very hard, I think you're probably set. You're going to be very happy with the quality that you get. With that being said, if you are pegged at 90%, your machine might struggle to record, especially if you're playing a game. You may have to go to super fast or ultra fast in order to give yourself a little more headroom on the CPU. And all you have to do, of course, is just keep an eye on this when you're recording to test it out. Now, the last thing I really want to say about the recording settings here in your output mode are about the recording format. Now, I selected MKV, and the reason why you might want to leave MKV selected as well is if your machine happens to crash while you're recording, if you select something like MP4, everything in that recording will be lost. Whereas if you're recording in MKV, everything will be savable and you'll be able to recover that. And OBS has something built in to convert that file so easily. And of course, I'm gonna show you how to convert your MKV files in OBS in a couple of minutes. The last thing I wanna talk about here is the audio tracks. This is amazing stuff when you wanna edit because it allows you to put your game audio on one track your microphone audio on another track. So you can basically select how many tracks you wanna record right here in your audio track. So just keep that in mind and I'll show you later how to assign your audio devices to each audio track. In my case, we're gonna select two. One is gonna be for the game and two is gonna be for my microphone. After we're done setting all this up, I'm gonna click apply and okay. All right, so now we need to add our game. I have a game running in the background. You'll see we have a scene here. I'm gonna click plus, and there are a couple of different ways that you can add games. So the first thing and the best way is to go ahead and go to game capture. You can name the game whatever you want, and make it easier for you to remember, and then just click okay. And now we're gonna capture any full screen application. And you can set that up that way if you like, but most people will go here and they'll capture a specific window and then bring this down and select the window that they wanna capture. And there we go. And you don't really need to change any of this other stuff. You can just click okay and you're ready to go. Now, depending upon the size, you wanna go ahead and right click, transform and fit to screen. And there we go. So now we have our game in here, but of course you can see in our audio mixer, we have absolutely no audio. So the next thing that you're gonna wanna do, click on here, and you're gonna wanna go to audio output capture, and we're gonna go ahead and click okay, and just select where we're listening to the audio for the game. So in my case, I'm listening to it on my headphones right here, and I can click okay. Now you can see there's no audio coming from the game, but when I go ahead and select the game, there we go we can see that the audio is now playing perfectly fine. It will stop playing whenever I click off of it. The last thing we of course would wanna do is go ahead and add our microphone. So I'm gonna click the plus and I'm gonna to go to audio input capture and you probably wanna name these if you can so you remember what they are. I'm gonna call this mic. Then I'm gonna drop it down and select my microphone that I'm using to record this. And there we go. So now we can see that my microphone is in here and ready to go. Now there could be occasions where game capture does not work. If game capture shows up as a black screen, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you go over and highlight the screen to make sure that you're moving stuff around. And a lot of times that will bring up your game capture. But if game capture does not work, there are a couple other ways to capture it. So let's go ahead and remove our game capture. And the next method would be the window capture. So all you have to do is select window capture, open it up here in the properties window. You just select the window for your game. In my case, there we go. Capture method automatic. You can actually capture the cursor and you're gonna see right now, if I go over here, 
you don't really see the cursor. But depending upon what type of game, you may actually see the cursor. We'll click OK. We'll go ahead and right click and transform. Fit to screen. There we go. We still don't see my cursor. So this is not the type of game where you would be using a cursor. But as you can see, when I select it, we have audio coming from our game capture just the same. So loading it isn't any different no matter what method of capture you're using. Now, sometimes people may suffer from some sort of negative experience from using window capture, which I think is probably one of the best ways to capture it if you are using a laptop with only one monitor, window capture is easily the easiest way to do it. But there is one other way. We'll go ahead and remove this and we're gonna click the plus and we're gonna go to a uh, display capture. And then all you have to do is select the display where your game is playing and click okay. Now, needless to say, I have it running on a 720 monitor, which is why I have to fit it to the screen will obviously look a lot better if you are playing it on a 4K monitor if you're trying to do a 4K recording. So now we have it going, we can select it, you can still see that our audio is functional with the game selected. So display capture, window capture, and game capture all basically work the same way, but you're probably going to get the best results from game capture when you can get it to function properly with the game you're trying to play. The last thing that we want to do is set these up so the game capture audio comes in on one track and my microphone comes in on another. So all we have to do is click the little three dots over here and then we're going to go into advanced audio properties. And over here on the right, you can see that we have some advanced audio properties where it shows the tracks and they're all checked, but we're gonna uncheck all of those tracks right here so that we can select where we want this to be recorded in the final recording. So we have audio output capture, which we know is our game audio, and we're gonna record that on track one. We want our microphone to be recorded on track two, and that's it. Now we have it all set up so that it will record our audio on two separate tracks and it's going to be absolutely perfect. So all you have to do then is click start recording and bada bing, we are now recording our game footage. We can do whatever we want and once we are finished, all we have to do is click stop recording. Now you can also pause your recording right here if you'd like and it will of course pause your recording. Then you can click the unpause to unpause it and it will start recording again. Now you can see right here, it says our encoding is overloaded. Consider turning down your video settings. This is what it's going to tell you if you're running into problems. Now I'm running into that because of course I'm recording all of this screen on another recording. So I don't have multiple NVIC encoders in order to do it. But let's go ahead and stop our recording. There we go. And what we can do is go up here to file and show recordings and it's going to show us the recording that we just created. So here we go. This is what our recording looks like and we obviously can't hear any sound because it's going through the headphones. But what you notice is that this recording is an MKV. So we want to go ahead and make this into an MP4 file. The easy way to do that is to go to file and go to Remux recording. Then we're just gonna click these three little dots here. We're gonna go ahead and select that MKV, click open, and it tells us what the file recording is going to be called. We can click Remux. Then all we have to do is when we take a look, we now have an MP4 file that is the exact same file as our MKV. Now, the last thing that I wanna show you is, especially for people who aren't super familiar with OBS, you can add your camera in here as well. But maybe you want some scenes with the camera and some scenes without. Well, it's really easy. We're gonna create a second scene here. You can call it whatever you want. It makes it easier to identify. We're just gonna leave it blank. And our new scene has no audio or sources. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and click the plus and we're going to add our game capture again. And it already exists, so all we have to do is select it and click okay. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna resize it by going transform and fit to screen. 
and there we go and then what we're going to do is add our camera so in order to do this we're going to go to our video capture device and we're going to just click ok you can name this obviously and we'll select the camera that we're using right there and then what i'm going to do is go down here and i'm going to select a use custom audio device i want to select the microphone that i'm using there we go and so now we have a camera in here i can just adjust the size of this camera but we don't yet have our audio in here for our video game so what i'm going to do is go ahead and click the plus and we're just going to go to that audio output capture and we already have our audio output capture in here i'm going to go to add existing it's going to take the one from the other scene and there we go so now my microphone is working and we have our audio capture for our game working when i select it now you will notice right here that if we go into advanced audio properties the video capture device which is different because it is coming from the camera and using the same microphone is selected with everything so what we're going to do is just fix this so now we have our game recording on track one and this microphone's recording on track two we can click close and we're all set makes it really easy for us to record this scene and then when we want to switch over to a scene with a camera in it we can just click this scene and it will easily just switch back and forth between the two scenes to show us the one with our camera and without pretty easy stuff i can't wait to see the amazing content that you create from the recorded footage if you want to see some simple editing tricks for making your footage into videos you should check this video out. Big thanks to the sponsors that support this channel. You can find their links down below in the description under the heading sponsors. I couldn't possibly do this without them or you. So thanks. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.